Hey everyone, and welcome to my dev vlog where I share my experiences with development and hopefully can help you along the way as well. We are very excited with all the things we've been working on and can't wait to show you some of our progress. In one of our previous dev vlogs, we went over how we added a dialogue system to our game as well as added an interaction system so we can interact with the world. Well, to start off this video, I wanted to show you part of the questing system that builds off of our dialogue system, including a dynamic way to add voice acting quickly and easily. Here's a small quest we created with voice acting. How do you do, young man? Hey, yeah you, I twisted my ankle and can't get up. Could you bring me that mushroom over there? That should heal me, or at least make me pretty. Blargo ha 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 Maybe I would have given you much gold. Too bad. Yes! I know the smell of a mushroom when I smell it. Can I have it? Hot room! Fine! Hey! I smell a mushroom! Can I have it? Now this is a combination of our custom code and using Ink, which is a narrative scripting language for games. But what is cool is we can actually reference our Unity c -sharp code to write custom functions. For example, if you look at the globals.ink file that we created, you can see two functions marked external. Basically, this is a reference which we can use in our other ink files. When he asks the question, did you bring it? If your answer is yeah, it will call the check item function. Then you can easily branch the story from there. In our C-sharp code, we can bind the external functions. For example, the check item function is bound here, and then it interacts with our inventory manager to see if the inventory has the item it is looking for. The take item function works similarly, where it just removes the item referenced from your inventory. This is a very efficient and effective way to be able to interact with characters in dynamic ways, combining ink, scripting language, and our C-sharp Sharp Unity code. To add voice acting, we use tags, which are a part of the Ink scripting language. We added an array of audio clips to our scriptable NPCs, which allows us to connect any number of voice acted lines to the NPC. We then added a function to our dialogue manager, which for each line of the dialogue, it will parse any tags connected to it. If the tag starts with play audio, it knows that it's going to be playing an audio clip. So it will get the next word right after play audio, which is the audio clip name. Since the game is really starting to take shape and our systems are falling into place, the story has also continued to take shape and evolve, and I decided I was ready to start working on creating the main character for our game. I started from a base humanoid model, but since we wanted our character to resemble a crow, I had to modify the face quite a bit. Since everything will eventually go through the pixel shader, and for the most part you will be viewing the character from far away, there isn't really a need to put a lot of detail into the model. The most important thing when creating the character was to have everything be bigger so you can see it easily when it is pixelized. For example, I made the eyes extra large because it becomes a lot easier to see the eyes from a distance, plus I really ended up liking how it looked. I then went on to animations. For now I am using Mixamo animations, which I imported into Blender. Then I used a plugin called Rococo Studio Live to retarget the animation from the imported Mixamo animation to my crow's armature. And voila, we have an animated character. Although with Blender, there are always issues. After doing a buttload of weight painting, cleaning up the mesh, and a bunch of other Blender stuff, I was ready to import a new player model into the game. I first retargeted my player animation to see if the idle animation was working correctly. Once I knew everything was working, I dropped my pixel materials onto the character. Let me know what you think of the results in the comments. Now I needed to finish building the main outlook area to start setting the scene and show the world you are going to begin exploring. I created some simple pixel art trees and placed them on a plane. I can then rotate the plane and give the illusion from a distance of a group of trees. I then created a 3D model of giant doors, which will be set into a cliff overlooking this valley, at which you can see these paths kind of spreading out into different directions for the player to eventually explore. Our main goal is to finish a demo version of the intro and basic core loop of the game, so if you want to stay informed on where we are in the game development process, the first place I will be updating is our Discord channel, but I will also be posting over on Twitter and of course will continue to post videos on YouTube. So stay tuned because we definitely have a lot more to come. Anyways everyone, if you have anything you'd like to see in the next video, please let us know in the comments. For those who enjoyed, please consider liking the video, and if you want to see more devlogs like this one, subscribing with the notification bell on will help you stay up to date. Thanks for joining me for this devlog and I'll see you next time.